see that you got some makeup on today. I do, we're recording, we're recording video. I know. I should have put something on, you know, on, on my face. Some kind of like, I don't know, matte something. Do I look oily? No. I mean, okay. I, I look wet. I know, but that's your normal <laughs> default look. <laughs> I, look, I look damp. That's my <laughs> voice. Have you put on? Have you been out to do shows this week? No, I didn't. I have not done. I mean, literally, the the show that I did last week was I was a last minute replacement, and I shouldn't have gone because I literally had no material, and I wrote it like the night before, and. Uh -huh. It was ex it was exciting. It was really I felt high. Like I, oh yeah, you were telling me that. Yeah, I felt, you felt crazy. Like you were drunk I was on drunk. drugs. And this is the reason why it's dangerous. You know what I mean? Like that any of these things without figuring out a way to like temper them and figure out how you're going to manage these and self regulate these feelings. Like I don't know what Beyonce or like people that you know are like doing it on a level and performing to thousands upon thousands of people and receiving that energy like you understand mm -hmm. why all of them are addicted to like serious drugs like no human was meant to re receive that amount of this amount of dopamine yes this rush yes. of hormones yes. yeah speaking of beyonce did you see clips of her dubai um no concert no it, okay first of all she sounded insane okay she was doing these runs uh, it was all over the internet on TikTok, but she, um, what is what was it? Uh, what f I forgot which song. It's at the end. It's like da, I'm. I shouldn't sing, but it <laughs> I don't know. I was like, I was like, I was, it, I was enamored. I was like, keep going, yeah. Peter. <laughs> She did a beautiful run at the end of one of her songs. She's arranging her music. Yeah. She's in Dubai. There are a lot of obvious stipulations sure. because all of her dancers were like in like artist smocks. Sure. Yeah. yeah you know what I mean? Yeah. Usually they're like one nipple out, yes, a, one nipple the whole in. thigh yes, cut out. Yes, yeah, yes. exactly. And then, you know, they're wearing some like ridiculously like hot and flashy sure. um, dance costume. Of but, you know, you're in. Dubai. You're, so you're honoring the local customs and traditions. Customs and traditions. Yeah. Um, not being openly gay or um, even I, apparently you can't be like having like you can't be a boy girl making out in the streets either, which. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that it's not just like two gay boys that are not allowed to make out. Like even the heteros are like keep it at home, yes, which yes. I, I love that for everyone. <laughs> and and that's, that's, that's equality. Yeah, that's the kind of country I want to live in. All right, <laughs> contrite. No, um, she she was out there and she was pretty for? covered up too. Who was she? What, there was, was a Dubai. For? There was a new hotel in Dubai or like resort in Dubai was opening. And the reason I saw it, okay, the so money, obviously, the money, the money. The, like, you know how much damn. she got paid? Let me guess, okay. G give me your best guess. Be okay. Think about it. It's Beyonce. Yes. She did. She did 58 minutes of performance, wow. including pyrotechnics and all that, under under one hour. Yes. Okay? And she was scheduled for that. The, the hotel booked her for one hour of performance. And she gave them the 58 on the dot. Like, I love that kind of precision. Love. In, what, how much do you think? $10 million. Try $24 million. Ah! For one hour of singing and dancing, and it wasn't even her new stuff. They didn't want her new it's, stuff. They wanted the hits. They wanted the hits, but Renaissance has been out for a while, and people are begging and cl like clamoring not only for the visuals for the album, but Man, when these fucking tickets the are going on yes, tour. Yes, please. And nothing has been announced. I so know. when she did this gig, I was afraid she, they were going to be like, "Oh, you have to do Renaissance for her." She wouldn't but have done it. It's she Beyonce. Would, yeah, she would not have done it. She was like, 24 million, bitch, I'm worth billions. Yeah, the yeah. fuck are you talking the, about? The, the visuals? The, uh -uh. the thing that the ent entire world is clamoring for? It, for you? I'm sorry, Dubai. You're not a getting hotel? that. hotel? In Dubai? <laughs> <laughs> hotel in Dubai sounds fucking nice, though. I mean, t I, 24. So she got what? 24 million, one hour of performance, oldies. Who is Who, as a movie star, commands $24 million of performance? Julia Roberts, um, like in the nineties. I don't know if I don't know if anyone exactly. I don't know if anyone commands that kind of price anymore. I really don't know. Like at the height Maybe of like it, Tom Cruise. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like at the height of like in the early two thousands with Mission Impossible One, 
Two, maybe yeah. two. Maybe Arnold Schwarzenegger. What? When? Uh, at like T three, you know? I don't know. Like uh, Leonardo DiCaprio right after Titanic. Titanic. Yeah, maybe. You know, something like that. But like, I don't know if those kind of numbers exist anymore, just because our the movie industry has changed so course, much. Yeah, yeah. No one's going to watch movies. Ticket sales are in the gutter. So yeah, movie stars aren't movie stars like that anymore. Yeah, and like, there's too many stars. Yeah. For anyone to be an actual star, who do you think is the last great movie star? God. I mean, you know. Brad Pitt. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm trying to think. We sort of came of. Like our Robert De Niro's are gone. Yes. We don't have Al Pacino's anymore. There's no Marlon Brando's. Um, even a Meryl Streep we don't have anymore. No. I mean, you know, like, who do we have that's close to Meryl? Who's the newest Meryl Streep, right? Um, that lady, the British lady who keeps winning everything. She always plays like an awkward toothy girl, toothy woman. Um, she, she played, um, the queen. Jillian Anderson? No, 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 no. <laughs> Did she play the queen? Yeah, she played Mary Thatcher. <laughs> no, who's the, who played the stepmom in Fleabag? She's so great. Octavia, no, uh, Olivia Coleman. R.I.P. No, what do you mean? She's not dead. She's dead. Olivia Coleman is not dead. What are you talking about? <laughs> I just saw her in a movie the other day. It's, it, was not, it was live about? on tape. No, no, you're. You're crazy. Olivia Coleman's still alive. She just won um, a bunch of stuff for that movie. The Was it The Queen or uh, where she was playing like a lesbian queen or something? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I looked it much. up so sorry to Olivia Coleman. She is alive and well. How dare you? Don't erase her life. You're minimizing Olivia Coleman's entire life <laughs> and her contribution to the entertainment industry. Okay, listen to me. You know I suffer from... Who are you thinking of? You know I suffer from... Acute white bi- blindness, and um, you, especially when it comes to the UK whites, yeah, <laughs> you are not nice to those UK whites. <laughs> yeah, you really do. Have you ever been to the UK? I don't ever want to go. You blindly hate on UK whites, and it's the strangest thing I've ever like experienced. <laughs> I know. I, I, I it's, it's, it's not great. Um, I'm trying to think here. Helen, Helen McCrory is who I'm thinking of. Who the fuck is that? She was, um, she was in The Queen. She was also uh, in all the Harry Potter movies. She was oh. uh, in Skyfall. Oh. Ali- Helen McCrory. That's what I'm thinking. And she's of. dead. She's dead. She died. Okay. She died. She died at 52. Olivia Coleman, alive and well. Congratulations. I'm surviving. I'm so sorry for thinking that you were this lady. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. They do it to us all the time. Yeah. <laughs> they do it. Uh, they finally know who Michelle Yeoh is. Before <laughs> like before this year, they were like, that crouching tiger chick? Yes. You know what I mean? Like, no one fucking knows. Oh, no or when uh, when Ali Wong got divorced and uh, the the pictures of her husband were just like of Randall Park at a, at a separate repeat. Oh my did. God. Oh my God. So <laughs> embarrassing. If I was that husband, I'd be so fucking pissed. If I was Randall Park's wife, I'd be pissed. Uh, Randall Park's uh, has a wife. Yeah. I guess I should have known this. I never see him with her. Yeah. Good. He keeps, you know, that, yeah. Randall Park is married. Uh, for sure. Here you go. Spreading lies again. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's married. He's married. He's oh, married. Okay. All right. All right. Anyway, um, <clears throat> my point is we don't have movie stars like that. There's no Merrills. There's no Brad Pitts anymore. Everyone's like a TV star now. Yes. Or, or um, yeah, the the churn and burn is so much faster than it used to be. And even the, I mean, you know, Jennifer Lawrence would I would say is like a movie star on. On the rise, uh, and, she and on a level like she was like Hunger Games, like it was. She's been famous. She's been huge. huge yes, she won an movies. Oscar yes. early, and it's yeah. all this stuff, and she's on a level. I mean, like mm-hmm. Timothy Chalamet, like these are like big stars. But I will say, when I, I mean, maybe Jennifer is close and closer to it, but is there's like something so 
human about her versus Julia mm-hmm. Roberts, who is a bona fide movie star. She's unavailable. Yes. Whereas like Lo- Jen- J Law is very available. She like, like she's she's friends with like some problematic people. You know what I mean? Like, she- <laughs> no, I mean, like and her whole thing is that she's like kind of quirky and down to earth and. I was found at a mall. Yeah, type, exactly. Yeah. Versus like Julie Roberts, like you see her and she seems like even on screen otherworldly. Like she seems more special yeah. and untouchable. Untouchable. Like it's that sort of that movie star fucking it thing. Yeah. You know, I was watching th- Color of Money. Yeah. It's just that thing. Paul Newman, Tom Cruise, whatever you think about Scientology and whatever was going on there. But I mean, you know. He's a fucking goddamn bona fide movie star. He jumps okay, from Okay, speaking of Scientology, um, did you watch the uh, Golden Globes? Yes. Parts of it. Parts. And, oh, did you watch um, Gerard's speech or whatever set at the top? Oh, about the Scientology? Oh, my. <laughs> when he's demanding for Shelley Miscavige's yes. return. Bring, bring a four. First of all. <laughs> I loved I loved how far he went in those um in those moments uh-huh. because it was the best person Sure Ricky Golden Gervais. Globes yeah. is always op- about like Ricky Gervais great like he's always there like poking fun at the celebrities going going raw or yes. whatever And uh, so there is a tradition of that um and I love that Gerard took it to that level because like we don't ever talk about Bruno and Scientology We don't talk so, about Bru- yeah, oh. Bruno Yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's not what we do in Hollywood. There are two things we'll talk about. Scientology and some dude named Bruno. That's ruining the family vibes. And both of them are ruining the vibe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean truly like the Scientology coming for it. You know, no one's ever done that and, publicly. Really, and, and Not is, one person. Maybe Leah Remini, but she's never been like big enough to be um, giving out awards. I mean, and she he, and, and by doing that, she's been silenced. You know, like by not being like taking away her career has like actually silenced her. It's like the most who took her career away? Leah Remini's doing fine. She's on. She's hanging out with Kevin James. On that show still? King of Queens? She's still on that show? There's, there's that new King of Queens show. Didn't you see that? Is, the, like what's Kevin, it called? The King of Kings? <laughs> I don't <laughs> know. I don't know, but it was like a reboot of that. Sh- I'm not sure if it's still on or anymore. I don't know what Leah Remini is doing, but <laughs> do you think, okay, you do you think that Hollywood or like, I don't know, the Illuminati yeah. has shunned her from? Of course. But okay, from what? Based on what? That she used to be on this CBS sitcom, and now she's not. No, I think that there are um, plenty of other like ways to do this. Like the same way that all the stuff like with Rose McGowan and like all sort of like uh, people that have tried to voice um, opposition to Pre- either sexual, predators, yeah, predators um, have been silenced. You know, and I, for one, I, I support Scientology. I love Scientology. I. <laughs> You don't have to do this. You don't have to ape for Scientology. Not on this podcast. No one's listening. All right? Shelly's not listening. Where are you? I'm concerned. But also at the same time, you know, I support all Scientologists. The patriarchy yeah. that <laughs> exists inside of that cult. <laughs> Shame on you. Shame on you. I am. I'm shameless. Um, so mm-hmm. that's why. I mean, you know, I. it's not even that. I think... I did hear the Gerard thing. You know, the thing about Scientology that always feels crazy to me is, you know, did you ever hear, because Cher used to f- fuck uh, Tom Cruise before he was famous. Who? Cher. Cher? Yes. No way. Yes. He is gay. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> she, she fucked him when he was a young, like pre-Scientology. We're talking like um, Days of Thunder. Like I'm talking like he, this you know that t- that thing where he had hopped into a car, got out to L.A. You know, like mm-hmm. in a car and like in his tight blue jeans and like got out yeah. to L.A. bushy tailed and bright eyed. And I yeah, guess he yeah. lived in like an apartment building, and Cher was like fucking him, and wow. she Whoa. said she said that he was a terrific lay. 
a terrific what? lay. I don't believe that. That's the I thing. don't believe that for a second. Are you calling Cher a like, liar? Are you calling Cher a liar? I don't. Okay. Maybe I'm not. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cher knows her shit. She's been around the fucking block 89 times. <laughs> She and she's dating like a much younger yes, gentleman right now. Yes. Good for her. She's always been into the young folk. Love. And um it, it's um I can't imagine Tom Cruise being sexual for some reason. I don't get I understand like I found him sexual when he was in risky business. Yes. Cocktail when he's like sliding out with his little tidy whities yes. and his big shirt. Like, yes, we all had a sexual awakening in the eighties and nineties with Tom Cruise. But for some reason have you seen okay this is a digression for a second but have you seen tom cruise on tiktok he's on tiktok he's on tiktok and he's like okay he his his content is so weird he's like in japan and wait, he's talking to some shop owner huh wait and it's, it's tom cruise and his phone on tiktok yeah, I mean, he's, I don't know if it's his account, but, like, he's doing the TikTok. He's like, hey, whatever, I'm in Tokyo. And and the the woman in the store are, like, showing him a bag or, like, shoes or whatever. And he's like, ah, so, ah, so, I got doll. And he's, like, acting like a fucking um, anime character. And I'm like, <laughs> girl, you are not the last samurai. You are not the first samurai. You will never be a samurai. Stop it. You know how like white people go to like Japan and they want to be it's like the whole um what's her name Gwen Stefani disease yes. like oh my god I didn't realize I am Japanese <laughs> I, I'm Dola Dola. they're all Dola Zala. yeah <laughs> yeah I'm transracial yes. like he and you can tell he's not doing it to make fun of them he really he's is honoring. trying he's honoring. it's like it's the it's the people Yuck. from Chicago it's the people from Yuck. Chicago that pronounce it guacamole in Chicago and it's guacamole. Uh, south of the border you know what i mean they're like they're trying to honor it by who says guacamole <laughs> that's not even the right what <laughs> who says guacamole you mean they start spelling with a j what are you talking about i don't know anyone who does that are you coming forth and saying that you did this no i've never been to mexico that's why, because you call it guacamole. <laughs> like, no, bitch, you can't come into our country. We have too much culture. You're not ruining it. I mean, you, uh, okay. What's another way? It's it's ha 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 here, and then and and it's ja ja ja, 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 ja there. there. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> just. I get it. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I understand. I mean, they think that they're honoring it by being borderline racist about it you know it's just like i understand white people you're trying to like be uh, i guess like reverse assimilate or something like that you're trying to like take it on the culture but just be white and weird like don't, don't try to be that culture like yeah. you stand out like crazy no it's crazy to watch anyway tom cruise I don't find him sexual at all, especially after like he and Katie Holmes started dating. Yes. I just never found him to be exuding that kind of energy. He he feels like uh, he feels like someone who like they Scientology turns off at the end of the night. Yes. You know what I mean? And then like reboots and like ka -ka 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 -ka, in, so, in his chamber, yes, you know? in his hyperbaric yeah. chamber, and he comes out. Yes, but the thing is, if you I feel like he has no like um, he has no like privates. Ken doll. He's Ken it's doll. like a Ken doll, like smooth yes. down there. I have to imagine. But Cher I says he's a good lay. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, what that mouth do? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, no, this is like pre all the Scientology stuff. And he did at that moment, like, there is a charisma and magnetism to his self and body in a lot of those earlier mm. movies before he's scientology and like only does gritty um action movies because a lot of mm. those he's not even fucking anymore he's just no you know grim and doing action like he's not yeah. fucking he used to fuck. i don't want i don't want to see him fucking like did you see top gun maverick he's fucking when he took that? his shirt off no he's not yeah. thank god but he, he there's that like of course, for the gays. Yeah. 
they had to include or re up that like you know classic homoerotic yes. naked volleyball yes. scene from the first one, yes. which I was awakened to my own homosexuality okay. during that scene. So I was like, okay, let's see how I they're gonna to do it for the next bat. generation yeah, of yeah. queers. Uh-huh. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Dig, bump, and serve. And I watched the new one. Did you watch the new one? No. I'm not interested it. in it's, Northrop Grumman propaganda. It's good. Yeah. It's a it's a great ride. Okay. You can tell why they took like 18 years to make it because it's like re- they're really flying those jets and it like they're the cameras are in there. Are like, you serious? Yeah, it's not like a green screen thing. Like that's why they took forever because like of course Tom Cruise and all his whatever um, actors all did like all the real stuff and reshot, reshot, reshot. Anyway, so. There's one scene that gratuitous, like um, shirtless scene where like all the new guys hot, you know, they're all like playing um, football or whatever. They changed the sport. They had to update it. And um, what's his name? Tom Cruise takes his shirt off and I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, for his age, looks great. But like you're standing next to 20 year olds, 30 year olds whose skin still has that like bounce elasticity. you know when you get old yes. you're less like collagen or whatever the yes. fuck drops and your your skin starts to look like like draggy skin yes you know like it starts to like pool in places it puckers <laughs> it puckers it pools yeah i know i just gave fucking birth i know <laughs> my body is pooling to the bottom of anything that i wear Looking for, I, I have to get more architectural in a lot of my yeah yeah you your your body starts like really giving into gravity hard right yeah, it's giving and up. you can yeah. see that yeah. you can see that on his body and yeah. <laughs> you can see that on his body and I'm not trying to body shame but like don't like leave a tank top on or something like don't be obviously looking like this next to these young hotties but like i guess like he the fact that he is that much older and he looks like that is you know yeah and and over 50 50 body representation you know like that still looks whatever it looks great for what his age is but he's just not nice they didn't do a nice like soft lens on that oh it was the softest lens (laughs) Honey, like what they a did for Robert and blur. Redford in every single movie of his after. Like, yes, girl. Yeah. Because Robert Redford's face looked like, like uh, the Sahara Desert. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like really, it was just cracked. Yes. And so they uh, they were doing some kind of nice blur. That over all the pretty it, but... horses thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that movie? I was just like, it, yeah. there's like, it was just like, I, I, like the entire movie. I'm just I'm like, like, do I have wipe? Vaseline on my yeah. eyes? <laughs> no, yeah. Can I wipe? Just one wipe. Oh, <laughs> uh, anyway. Oh, speaking of um, whether uh, they're gay or not, I had started going to a Pilates class a few months ago. Okay. Are you liking it? I love it. Okay. I love that. Here's the things I love about Pilates. There's um, you're you're working out like on your own machine. Yes. Your own reformer. Yes. But you're in a class. Yes. So that feels already great. And um, 90% of the workout I'm laying down. Yes. Wow. Oh my God. Who I loved it. I never knew I could fucking work out by laying down. Yes. That's amazing. I Good mean, for me. I, I love Pilates. Like I've been doing this. Oh. I've been a part of many different weird. They're all sort of cultish as well. There's always like a head lady and then like all the, her, her, They're trying to sell you classes. Everyone's exactly. like, oh, the we're going to do teacher. Ex- it is very interesting. But yeah. one of my favorite things about Pilates is that you will feel so sore and bonus, you will not sweat. There's so many. You don't t- sweat. You don't sweat. I love that. You we, don't sweat, but you're tired. You're tired, and you come you've, out. You've you've used every like tiny muscle that mm-hmm. you didn't know you had. Yes. And you come out sore, and I come out feeling like really like tall. Yes. And stretched out yes. and buoyant, which is amazing because usually I don't. I I feel like a tight little ball. I feel. Tro- but now, I feel trod upon. I feel like beaten yes. down and yes. wet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that one. gravity is really hurting. <laughs> But this extra, the Pilates has been great. So I go to this downtown studio. And it's like a smallish studio. There's maybe like at max 20 machines. Okay. 15 that's machines. A big, max, that's a big like that. studio, Peter. It's a, it, yeah, maybe, maybe like. Maybe not 15. in LA where it's like, you know, you can do an amphitheater. Everyone's doing yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> 
but Chicago, that's, um, a huge, that's a huge uh, that's place. a big yeah. studio mm -hmm. so i go to the studio downtown and there um my class i go to the same class same time period every whatever and my mm -hmm. class is filled with all mostly women okay right and they're mostly asian professional women yeah you know what i mean yes so so these are all like girls i grew up with yes like they all are a uh, professional tease. They're going out. They they're making their six figures. Yes. They're coming home. They have four hundred one ks. Like they, you know, I you know these Asian girls. I, I know these girls and I love these girls and uh, they hate me. And I I'm, yeah, I know yeah. me. Yeah. yeah, I wish I was one of them. It's they, anyway. I'm, they're too chaotic for this. Then they're like they can I, tell. They're like oh no no no. They have like a Philofax. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like <laughs> like whenever they go through so, a big, they go through a breakup or get laid off. Like. I, we're the friend they'll call because we'll get drunk with them and be messy. But yeah, we, we exactly. are we are we are filed away from their lives the second they, they get their shit together again. And we're just oh yeah. Once they get a new boyfriend, they're like Peter and Unji who? <laughs> no. And I can't I can't wait to be that person and to be discarded that way. Uh, it, it will happen soon. Yes. Trust me. You don't have to wait that long. <laughs> um. So I go to this class and these women. I think because I don't present. Um, like super fag you know what I mean yeah. like I don't know, even know what that means that I don't like there's walk just, in the, the smell of I don't walk in you is still strong it's it's <laughs> look at my hair yeah, I mean, I'm just saying like the <laughs> just the smell of church boy like if people if yeah, yeah. I don't know, know what I have to do like wear fishnets or something <laughs> like I have to have like one dangly earring <laughs> And uh, be angry about old Hollywood starlets or whatever. Like, what do I need to do? Are I have to go in up? like sucking on. Getting the side eye. Here's the thing. Not. I don't know. I don't know about side eye. I'm not getting like mean stuff. Not, but not mean. I mean, like they're giving you like the little like what's the what? once over. Yeah, yes. Once over. And there's a mom and a daughter in the class too. Like a uh, adult's daughter yeah. and like uh, kind of like Ajma yeah, Hemani yeah. style, right? And I can tell that they're eyeing me. And they're giving each other the eye, like, how about that one? Yes, yes. You know, like, he's working out. and You know, you know yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like, you, you, this is, like, in the same little Tokyo area. Maybe he's, like, making a similar money as you. You could see all the, like, it's that meme of that um, that woman who's doing the math yes. stuff. The, all the math <laughs> equations start coming. You can see the mom's eyes start glazing over, like, son-in-law potential, <laughs> great children potential. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> he's strengthening his core. He's going to be able to lift his kids up. <laughs> I mean, I'll, be, I'll be honest, Peter. The yeah. fact that you're taking the Pilates class is to me the number That's one. The, <laughs> there's no straight men in there. But like the other, the other, there's maybe one other male identifying person in there. And he is like, obviously gay. And also I'm very quiet. Like, I'm I'm an introvert, so like I don't go into a class and go like, "Hey girls, what's up? <laughs> like, how you doing? Oh, Sarah, love the new haircut." Like, I'm just like minding my own business. I get to my reformer, I stretch. Yes. I don't talk to anyone. I don't like. I literally don't give anyone eye contact. Sure. Or like any reason to approach me. Of course. Ever, you know. Yes. Um, that's but, that's a, this I, is correct behavior. But I'm thinking maybe I need to start like fagging it up a little bit. What? Because like, because in this class, I'm starting to feel a little like. Predated not, on? Not, not predated. No, not that. But like, I think I'm, I might be inadvertently leading some ladies on. Oh, you're a question mark. Yeah. You know, and they're like, what's going on here? And I want them to be comfortable because like anytime there's a bunch of women and quote, a hetero male sure. like the dynamics change right like and they're all, all all of a sudden they're like competing with each other you know what i mean and they're all like looking at me like ooh, potential mate but if i could if i could like project to them that i am a homosexual that i don't ever i'm, I'm not ever intending to be near any any of your vagines or your boobies or anything like you uh, no maybe this is what you need to do you need to go in front of the class one day and just say that exact speech i don't want to be close to any of your jeans 
You're Stop looking at me like that, mom. <laughs> I see you, mom. Ajima, I'm never touching your lady's boobies. Yeah, um, no, you can't look at my wallet. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Again, the fact that you're taking the class to me is the number one red flag. If these girls are truly, That's what I thought. And I thought is, I could just show up as myself and they're like, hey, this? okay, if that's a gay if man. If these girls are harboring any sort of small crush about it, how, how about this? Welcome to fucking LA. Like, are you kidding me here with this? <laughs> like, you got to learn this lesson. I, I get out of here. If, if, like, the hard, the hard lesson of falling in love with a possibly gay man. It's just LA, baby. Like, come on. Are uh, yeah, you me? Like, Cher did it. <laughs> <laughs> she said that he was a very good lover, an attentive, oh my god, and persistent. Wow. And the thing is, the way she described him as a fuck, I was like, that I could see. Like, a, really? Yes, like a golden retriever kind of energy, eager to please. I need to please. Yes. I mean, it's also Cher. Like, she's a megastar when he meets her. So, obviously, you're gonna want to like step step it up. That's true. That's true. You know. I mean, you know, Peter. Maybe you can just have LB drop you off at class one day. Just make out with me right before class starts. <laughs> like on top Sorry, of- girls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then you leave, and then you just, and then for the rest of the time, you're completely silent. Like, you just, I'm mean, making out with you. You're like, sorry, girls. And then back to what you were doing. <laughs> completely silent. Just, just stretching by myself on my reformer. <laughs> not I mean, looking at I, anyone. I love Pilates, but that's crazy. I know. And That's a crazy I, like, energy. That's like unfair to you. I, I it is, but maybe I. That's what I'm saying. Maybe I'm being unfair to them, and I'm no. like, I'm I'm like presenting too mask and hetero, which I I think I have I I not I think I have been blamed for that before. What? Who's blamed yes. you for this? Blamed? Like you don't you don't come off as gay? Are you really gay? There, there have been many people that we know, and I will name names in the Patreon Thank only, you. as you know. Thank you. Subscribe, like, and subscribe. Subscri- yeah, go check out our Patreon. <laughs> but there have been people in our own community, and I'm not talking about queer community, but in our comedy community in Chicago, when I was back in Chicago, that people would come up to me and be like, are you really gay? Are you just doing those jokes because uh, someone actually asked me if I was doing those jokes because I thought... I would get more spots that way for acting, for pretending to be gay. Are you serious? Can you believe that? The, this was the, 2015. 2014, 2015? 2015. In 2015. the Lord's year 2015, someone came up Before to- Trump. Before Trump, this kind of hate. Can you believe? But it's psychotic to me. Unprecedented. <laughs> but it's psychotic. Okay, any person, I think a lot of people... Um, who are in minorities or like in the queer community have encountered this sort of logic from people inside of comedy and before. It's like what like usually bisexuals get. Yes. But also yeah. even like as a woman, I've gotten like, Oh as, yes. Yes. As a person of color or like, you're like, well, you know, you get, you guys get a lot of opportunities because are you just, are you leaning into it because of this? Like, are you trying to capitalize on, your like this m- minority status in your in your uh, personal identity in order to get something inside a show yeah. business, yes, basically. Yes, yes. and <laughs> and white people love saying that they're like, truly, how did you get? And how did you thing, get that? And it's and it's usually white people who are the ones that do that. When all of them drudge up like a, an abuela that was two generations ago, and they're like, actually, yeah. <laughs> actually, my name is Ashley Lopez now. <laughs> It's like what? <laughs> Bitch, you white. Stop it. We had tacos occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> well, Tom Segura has that great bit about like him tra- checking into a hotel or something and people not understanding that his name is Segura. Yeah. And they they think he's Japanese. <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, yeah, you're Japanese." Segura. <laughs> he's like, "No, I'm Spanish." And they're like, "But you're white." Uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like watching them slowly understand. Wait, I didn't take AP World History. You know, like, oh, speaking of like people not understanding Spanish people or white or Spaniards, I have a gay friend who 
grew up in Ohio. Okay. So give him some slack. Um, I will. And but okay. and he he went to theater school, so he didn't learn much. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't he realize. He learned a lot about himself, nothing about the world. Okay. Yeah. He didn't realize that he was like, okay, Mexicans speak Spanish, but why is it called Spanish? And I was like, well, and he's like, why isn't it called Mexican? And I was like, well, <laughs> the language is from Spain. And he was like, yeah, but they speak Spanish in Spain and they speak Spanish in Mexico. And I'm like, uh huh. You know, there there was that whole like era of conquistadors, yeah. and they came, and you know, it's the it's the white colonizer stuff, man. Like you speak <laughs> and English, and you don't live in England. England. <laughs> and he was like, "Oh, oh, wait, they came here to Mexico first? And I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> oh my god, what the hell is going on?" And you're not—he's not a kid. It's not like he's a high schooler that's been um bereft of good education like he's 35 yeah he's not a state he's not he's not a homeschooled mormon he's not and he's a like woke gay comedy a lay person like if someone like that it doesn't understand that basic history and what the par- fuck? so he's just been parroting the language of colonization and um like like aping what it is to be woke without understanding any of the, re- the mechanics behind it. Any no. of the logic. No, no. So, this is like endemic, this problem to Los Angeles. That, that's actually they're like, just as problematic. Yes, absolutely. To not understand. I'm like, how are you 35 years old and you don't understand that Spanish is from Spain? That's uncanny to me. <laughs> like that's... We have a real problem in this country. So he like that people in Peru speak Peruvian. People in, do you know what I mean? Like people in Panama, people in Ecuador, like they all speak. No, he knows that they speak Spanish, but he doesn't understand why. Like he doesn't understand there was a transfer of violence and um, stealing yeah. and killing and pillaging and raping that a- ended up uh, proliferating the language of Spanish all around the Southern hemisphere of America. Like he just doesn't get that. He's like, Oh, they were always there. Peruvians were always there that, and they always spoke Spanish. It's like, what? No, 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 no. You know, Americans, we didn't speak English either. It was Ojibwe or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then y'all people came over here and, now and started speak- doing all your nonsense. And now we all speak this like fucking idiotic pigeon language. So, Anyway, just to let you know that coast is not clear. It is 2023. <laughs> <laughs> we have some serious issues. That's breathtaking. Horrifying. And I feel like a lot of my community, like gays, especially white gays, Midwest white gays, mm-hmm. just don't have the amount of education that the coastal gay white gays have that's just simple education stuff that i can't even like blame that on him like i have to blame that on our our, you know, our department you know, of I'm education gonna go, i'm gonna go ahead and blame him on this um I, I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> just like you I refuse to blame these ladies for not knowing that you're gonna be gay by being in a fucking pilates <laughs> class in little tokyo like get a fucking grip. Read a book. Like, what do you mean? Don't blame him. Who's who's look that? alive, Candace? Yeah, exactly. Like, come on, Hannah. Like, are you kidding me? I mean, yes. The, there is certainly um, a failing of the school system, of his own, you know, in, the infrastructure of the schools and his yeah. family and his friends and all of that to be able to graduate with a goddamn degree and not understand. Whatever, there's some feelings there, but ultimately there is the, some responsibility on your own part to educate yeah. yourself. If yes, if you're ingesting and parroting all these all this language of progressives of the progressives, and and they're simply empty words, that means that you're just as susceptible to be swayed by the language of hate. Mm-hmm. Yes, like if you are exactly. simply, you're just doing whatever's popular. That's brown shirt situations. That's brown shirt nonsense. Yeah. That's oh, that's a good German. Like what the fuck? <laughs> like I mean, no, no, no. I know. That's what I mean. know. Like, that, and they're all over LA. 
they, at a certain all point, you over LA, hiding right in our intelligentsias. Yes, they're hiding in our, you know, sweet green cafes. Like they're, <laughs> they're eating their little greens. salad. <laughs> no! They're everywhere. They're at our Mendocino farms. <laughs> they're at our Whole Foods. I mean, this is the reason why there's so many bitches that are like this whole anti-vaxxer bullshit. Like, it's uh-huh. let let's just. It's that I'm not even. I don't think the expectation should be that everyone needs to educate themselves and be like scholars and always do. Um, you know. I do. Why we, not? We have to be. I do. Of course, we, we do. have to be. But why can't they have to do I'm it? I'm expecting the lay person to do that because you would. I mean. We need to, though. Yeah. That's the thing. We've been letting them get away with, like, the bare minimum of, what do you even call that? Education, intelligence, wisdom, common sense. Yeah. Like, we've been, like, letting them get away with so little that, like, we have to catch up. Like, the standard has to be fucking higher. So, white folks, if you're listening, tell your other white folks... Where Spanish comes from? Why don't you be the arbiter of good news? Why don't you be the arbiter of enlightenment? Don't make us do it. We don't want to talk to y'all. You do it for your friends. If there was a Korean gay walking around acting foolish and saying stupid ass shit, you know, like yeah. I would be the first one to be like, girl, sit down. Get off the reformer. We need to have a talk. <laughs> reformer get in my lap and now yeah. <laughs> now all the women in this class will know that I we're gay <laughs> yeah I'm looking at you Ajma she's like we could work around this <laughs> but how gay is he <laughs> who's not gay everybody's gay <laughs> like I love women too I mean like I get I it's just to me, the the kind of breathtaking part of that is that I, I think the tr- real tragedy there is that there is such, that he never had the sort of um, curiosity to find out and figure it out. Yeah, you know, to yeah. learn more about it. That sort of lack of curiosity, I think, is what I see is the kind of endemic to so yeah. many people. It's not just yeah, absolutely. It's not just like whatever like. Uh, theater people it's i think a lot of people just aren't curious about why things are anymore you know i mean as somebody yeah to quote a community that i fully don't agree with do your own research (laughs) okay (laughs) i mean like just it's just be curious aren't you curious about like how things work like there's so many how things came to be yes my favorite part of Mr. Rogers was always like he would have you know that B roll of like industrial things that he would have on the show and be like this is how cans are made and it's just like really basic shit about see how, this like, is why you're queer because <laughs> you're <laughs> you're looking at like all right I need to get a clipboard and a megaphone and I need to organize the shit <laughs> Brenda bring the U-Haul in let's go we're moving things today. And we all know how things work. Like it's, yeah. but the thing is, that's real artists. People that do stuff are actually artists. Like if yeah. you have a can-do DIY spirit, that's like to me true artistry. And also goes kind of appeals to like a punk sensibility in me. It's like, mm-hmm. aren't you curious how shit is made? How things happen? How just yeah, not accept everything for what is given to you. Yes. Yeah, like if you are always, sh- I mean, like it's he's like his see. This lit- is how conspiracy theories start, though. You know what I mean? Like we're so we're always balancing, we're teetering at the edge. Of course, of- I love the conspiracy theories for that reason. <laughs> but I know what, it's fucking crazy. I'm not sitting here being like this is correct. I'm like yeah, yeah. this is fucking off the wall. But it's like yeah, this is this might be crazy and f- fun to go and go down a hole in at two in the just, morning. It's just as insane, you know. It's just as insane to be like that guy was presented with a sandwich and thought that there were sandwich trees. You know what I mean? Like that's <laughs> that's what that is. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, that sounds amazing. Yes. <laughs> Somewhere <laughs> over the rainbow. Maybe I should enter the Pilates class just singing that. <laughs> Somewhere. Um, <laughs> I know the ignorance is so wild and what it ha- what happens is that LA ends up being the place where not only all the dreamers from every state of the country slash world go yeah. but it's also like 
the pretty ones that yes. didn't have to try that hard. Oof. There's so many of those. And my friend that I'm talking about, he's tall and pretty. Yeah, give me your hot, give me your dumb. Like, that's what L.A. is like. Like, the Statue yeah. of Liberty of, of L.A. would say that. Like, you know. You're give me your hot, young, and crazy. Yeah. And, uh, so we can manipulate them and make zillions of dollars <laughs> on international film sales. <laughs> And things that like oh, will work in the Chinese market because aren't, there's no yeah. dialogue. Yeah. I remember the first blockbuster I watched. I was I was just like, there's not really a lot of words. <laughs> like, Chinese blockbuster? No, it was like I'm trying to think. It, it might have been a. It's not Bruckheimer, but it's the other guy that's like that. He did another. He did one of the Transformers. Oh, um, Jerry Bruckheimer and. Who's that other guy? Oh my God! I know who you you're talking, talking about. about. Right? Like it's that like, other guy who does all the like, like Con Air and shit like he that. He did all right? the like, like big explosions and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And I just remember watching the that one of those movies in the theater and like. Ridley after, Scott? No. No, no, no. Ridley no, is no. like a tortured auteur guy. No, no, no. This, Artist, yeah. Yeah. This I just remember watching a movie and it was like it had been like. I just remember looking at my phone and being like, there's been like five minutes of explosions, like people running <laughs> and it's like being like, no, like just like one word things where I'm like, oh, this is clearly for a non-English speaking market. Yeah. It's for four billion people who just loves explosions. Yeah. And the thing yeah. is like, and it's like, it's t incredible story, make visual storytelling. Yes. But I'm like, there's not a lot of words. I just remember thinking that in a theater, like yeah. in 2002, being like, yeah, there's not a lot of words. And that was 100% the moment where like they were making things for the Chinese market. And again, yeah. you know, that that's what happened. That's not, it works. It works. I'm not, I'm not knocking yeah. it. But I mean, that's, that's Would you ever want now. to be in a blockbuster? I can't wait to be saying no. <laughs> no! no! <laughs> Yeah, that's your problem. You keep saying yes too much. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to be in a blockbuster, but I just don't want to run. <laughs> I would, I you know what I mean? Like, I can't run. No, I have I, bad knees. But, but let's be honest. Like the I would love to do like a car chase. Oh, oh it, my God. My how dream, cool would that my be? Dream? Mm -hmm. Oh, putting the glasses on. The missile oh. is coming. Like that's my going to be. Oh, like, oh, you're the analyst. I'm the analyst that's like going to like give someone the bad news. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one who's, like, um, in contact with the uh, protagonist. Yes. While, and has to, like, help him or her. You don't have time. you got to get out problems. of there, Jack. Get out of there. They're closing in on I you. Got... I, I could buy you some time. <laughs> I want to buy him some time. <laughs> yeah. You're the one who, like, gets into the CC camera footage and then, like, does the ding and then, like, replaces it with, like, a circular loop of oh, that. Yes, that's exactly. That's, yes. that's, that's 100%. Yes. Can't wait. You want... You want to be like Caleb Heron in um, Jurassic Park. <laughs> that I be, part. I want to be half of what Caleb, Jurassic World. Caleb, I aspire to be half of what Caleb Heron is. <laughs> wow. You're going to have to start tweeting more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you ready, Peter? This, I'm ready. This is a new segment called The Bubble Tea. So Ooh. I'm going to be giving some news about Asian Americans and Asia and, you know, affecting the Asian community and kind of talking about it in this segment called the bubble tea. Um, I was reading this opinion, this op-ed in the Times entitled Women in South Korea are on strike against being, quote, baby making machines. I saw this. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. I read and this. And reading it. So there has been a crisis in all of East Asia with a declining birth rate for quite a few mm -hmm. years. In Japan and now in South Korea. It's China, been, too. In China, too. It's been, it reached like yeah. sort of crisis levels, levels. Um, in yeah. all of these, you know. And that's what happens when you oppress people by using capitalism. <laughs> um, it turns out people don't want to fuck. Um, the least <laughs> horny thing that you could do is to force people to work all the time and feel inadequate if they don't. So um, hmm. kind of crazy. But... What's very funny about this op-ed and what South Koreans... And the thing is that, is that women are revolt, rebelling against the idea that they have to do everything. So they're just saying no. They're opting out mm. of dating. They're opting out of marriage. They're opting out of giving... Sex. Yes. And it's yeah. like, um, you know, if you, they don't... If, you, if we can't be on a level playing field, we're not going to play at all. That is the attitude of... I people. love that. And I love it. That, I'm obsessed. That ought to be the attitude. Yes. That, oh yeah, I love that. And I love that and so much. And men are instead revolting, uh, re rebelling against the idea that feminism is good. That's... 
Like, yeah, it's just this, like classic incel behavior. Exactly. The the rigged game. What? You don't want to play anymore? Fucked up. Like, yeah. what? how else is, is the game played? And, well, what am I supposed to do? I only know how to cheat. Exactly. And my point yeah. is, learn how to play the new game. Play the game Hello? correctly. Read the instructions, bitch. Like, just take a moment. Read the instructions. Yeah. The instructions Update are... Update your app. Thank you. It's, it's not... And if you want to fuck, the... The instructions are clear. It's yeah. not a mystery. Treat them like a person, <laughs> and maybe they will fuck. And do your fair share, because that's ultimately it. Like that, and you know this with Korean men specifically. Like they don't want to do shit. They come home from no. work and they don't want to do shit. They're like, I I brought home the bacon. Now you cook it. Yes. Go cook it. Go serve me. Go peel an entire pear from start to finish with one f- flowing Wait, rind. <laughs> Why does every single Ajima, like, when did they learn how to do this? Because that's like the, that's like the a thing that shows that you are a good housewife or a good, like, you are, you yes. have a skill to be a homemaker, to be able to peel an entire piece of fruit from pear. one <laughs> rind all the way swirling around with a piece, with a small paring knife. It's that's true. like, that's like every mom's like introduction into momhood is cutting yes. that pear yes. all the way around. I mean, anyway. same with a clementine, you able to peel it like that. It's just it's crazy. But but the thing is, what feels unfortunate about this is like as opposed to viewing it as like a new challenge to be um, met with energy and vigor, all these things that men feel they are full of, they uh-huh. are instead retreating and blaming the rigged game for wanting to be fair. And like, to be fair, it has been um, an, an, an eternity. <laughs> they have had an eternity to play this mm-hmm. rigged game. Right. So I understand if... Um, so it's going to take a couple of seconds it's gonna take to a little readjust. Bit. Yeah. I will say, outside of this op-ed, the facts um, and the data regarding men... And uh, their enrollment in college, their participation in the workforce, things seem grim. Because um, oh. like women are outnumbering women, get, men getting college degrees like almost like two to one. Like it's insane. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> yes. Wait, what's going on? Men are dropping out. I don't get out. that part. Yeah. Men are dropping out. Because they can't compete with women, or we don't, we don't. That actually is something that it's like separate from this issue that they're dropping out of school. Who knows? That's odd. Okay, exactly. There, there's like this point where like you are. um, I'm not. I am someone who is a who doesn't think that like men are inherently inferior, even though this seems to be like an idea that is being project, you know, perpetuated lately. And I would agree. There are parts of you that certainly seem inferior, but the same way, like I can't lift as heavy a thing, you may not be as organized. That's fine. There's these things, but you can compete. You have to join. Let's get to work, men. You can. Most workforce stuff is not about lifting anything. You're on a (laughs) keyboard, hun. Relax. Your skills aren't really translatable anymore. I mean, honestly, <laughs> it's not wor- I, you know what? Maybe the thing is like, um, men should go to these. Straight men need to go to these Pilates courses because their core needs to be stronger. <laughs> there you go. Weak core, having ass bitches. That's why you keep dropping out of college, pussies. Because you because um. you get because <laughs> you keep dropping classes. <laughs> I mean that that's all. I was just I was just overwhelmed by like the argument that men have that that feminine feminism is the issue whereas they can't see So lame. So uh, god, come up with something else. Yes, what I mean, that feminism is the issue and not their own laziness. Not yeah. their own misunderstanding like they want to do less. Like if men are so capable, you're capable of this. You know, like, Go do use it. your own yeah, do your use your own logic on yourself. Doctor healed out himself. You know what I mean? Like men, yeah. you can do this. And also men who are like, well, it's my, um, you know, it's my physiological duty to, you know, expel my semen, you know, and, and spread my seed all across the world. That's my like directive from God. Then go do it with other men. Yes. You know what I mean? If you really need to nut that bad, put it in a butt. Not in a butt. Put in another man's butt or yeah. jerk off with another guy in a sauna or whatever. Like, why are you bothering these women while they're qu- climbing the corporate ladder? 
I'm busy. She's busy. <laughs> she ain't got time for your nut. Get the fuck out of here. And that's a bubble tea. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, we're back for the final segment. This segment is all about um, shouting out queer, LGBT plus um, people, events, places, etc. And today, um, I'm gonna. Uh, or and this segment is called mm, Sugar Free Red Bull. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I, um, I am in a homosexual relationship with a man that has uh, been my partner for going on eight years now. It's crazy. S- crazy. So when you, especially for someone who like really w- was afraid of vulnerability and, and relationships and all that, um, it is really crazy. But with that being said, when you have sex with someone for eight years, um, you start like understanding their body, their turn-ons, their turn-offs, how to get them to come quick. Yes. How to like maintain, you know, like you, yes. you, you pick up tricks. Sure. And after, after eight years, you've you know, discovered. You, know, you know how to drive that clutch. Yes, yes. Yeah. You know, you're no longer like a young 20s guy when a guy's over and you're like, Jesus, take the wheel. Like, yeah. you know what you're doing. Um, but once you do it with one person for that long, mm-hmm. you just you kind of get bored. It's like doing the same Pilates class over and over yes. again. You have to go from reformer level one to reformer level two at a certain point. So we had to level, we're leveling up our sex game. Ooh. And we've been talking about it for a little bit. And we're like, all right, well, let's pick a day and let's both go to West Hollywood and go to a sex shop mm-hmm. and really like get to know not just each other's wants, what turns each other on, blah, blah, blah. But like, what are the best like lubes to use on a sex toy? Because we have definitely ruined a sex toy before yeah. by using silicone lube. Yes. And that is a big no-no, by the way. You have to w- use water-based lube. If you're and using silicone, sil- yeah, you got to be water-based. Yeah, I, you, I hate water-based though. I'm sorry. I, I don't know about people out there who are using water-based lube. It's just not for me. It gets gunky yeah. too fast and it it starts chafing like – so especially for like it's not as um, good. dick to butt sex like you really need the slide of the silicone mm-hmm. because it's not self um lubricating yeah. like like a like a vagina you know so like you have to help it out anyway so we we go and we decide to look at some stuff we decide to go get um something that is a uh something for like um a prostate uh stimulation simulator mm-hmm. okay uh and also one like a flashlight okay that is like uh, if you guys don't know what a flash flashlight it's like a big flashlight but instead of it being a light it's like a fake um hole v- hole that's like ribbed for your pleasure or yes. whatever there's like and it's very like it feels really nice anyway so does it it does okay. it feels like it feels crazy. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, so you, um, and you could like dial on the top to make it like Tighter. the suction harder yeah. or whatever, you know? Interesting. So anyway, so yeah, yeah. there's, it, they come out with a lot of great technology. Okay. We bought, we got some poppers and we decided to like get poppers that are, you, if you guys don't know what poppers are, it's, it's basically like video head cleaner, but you inhale mm-hmm. it through your nose so that your uh, asshole gapes. Um, it feels so like, it's I, like I, but it also you get kind of like a rush in your head, like it's like a. Oh yeah, yeah. you get like high for like ten seconds. seconds yeah, it's like it's kind of like whippity, but it's whippity, but more downer, yes. and it feels like you feel horny. Yes, it's like, like it's, your it's, blood's rushing, everything's dilating. It's a physical equivalent of the sound like womp. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah it like, does like. Yeah. If you're listening to R and B and it's like Usher's "Let It Burn," it's like "Let It Burn." Yeah, it's like you're like the body. You can feel yourself opening. It's like the womp, like that opening. Yes, that you yes. physically feel that sound. Yes, and it's great for sex. Anyway, so we get a bunch of stuff, and we're and we ask the guy who works there for like tips sure. on like what should we get what not to get and we're looking for this kind of stuff or whatever so it felt really cool to like talk to someone through it but 
we forgot to like look at the prices and when he rung it up <gasps> it came out to so much money i'm talking like the fleshlight was 185 dollars. shut up yeah and the prostate thing was like a hundred dollars ah! Yeah, the lubes each were like thirty dollars each. Ah! Like it was so crazy, and I'm like, how do people fucking afford this? And I I felt so embarrassed that I didn't want to like put stuff back. Sure. So I was like, just put it in the bag, whatever. Just <laughs> ring me up. <laughs> and he rings me up, and it comes out to like the whole thing with everything, toys, etc. Accoutrement came out to like five hundred dollars. Oh my god so much money and i'm like sweating and i'm like okay um we'll just we'll have to have a lot of sex and we'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll make this like worth it, it yeah like cost per <laughs> cost per fuck needs to be like yeah i know we're gonna have to nut many times nut. to make this worth it yeah but <laughs> so yeah and he the guy um the store owner uh really nice guy he's he's so helpful and he sees that we're both like oh yeah, yeah. 500 so he decides he was like you guys spent a lot of money, so I'll, I'll put in. I'll like throw in something for free, and he throws in a um, like a face, like charcoal mask, <laughs> um, like a skincare mask, and I was like, "Honey, this not. there's no way I'm where I am using any skincare products from this that I bought shop. from a sex shop, and the bottle is sitting next to like a cream based anal loop called Boy Butter." <laughs> That's not happening. I'm not doing that. I'm not putting that charcoal shit on my face. And I saw the brand. And if the brand was like, I don't know, Rimmel London or like, I don't, you know, uh, fucking Olay or whatever. Sure. I would have been like, okay, this is a brand I could trust to put on my skin. The brand itself is none other than gay jockstrap brand Andrew Christian. Is Andrew and I'm Christian? Like, is Andrew Christian? I was like, what does this motherfucker know about skincare? <laughs> This all he knows is about like fucking cutting out the back of a <laughs> underwear. Brief, boxer briefs, <laughs> yeah, boxer briefs or like a jock strap without a strap. Yes, you know, like yes. you know what? About, I'm not putting this on my fucking face, so I don't know what to do with this thing. I, I don't even know if I'm gonna regift it because like who, what gay guy would want this Andrew Christian face mask? Oh my he, god! He gave you a, he gave you a chore. Yeah, maybe I'll put it on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Make my feet all pretty and glistening. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, that's it for Sugar Free Red Bull, you guys. Thanks for listening. Uh, that was our show. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.